Welcome to the BB Bots show, episode number nine. How good was that show we just seen? The, the, yeah, the, the task was unbelievable. <laughs> and I am absolutely over the moon. We got the star of that show with us tonight. We've only got <laughs> Maxwell Ward. No Maxwell! way! Oh, <laughs> Welcome. And I don't know if you remember, I don't know if you remember also, back in the day. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hang on, that's all right, Maxwell. <laughs> you, you're gonna have plenty to say in a minute. Um, also from the same series, from the same series, he might have missed out on the box task because he came in a bit late. I think it was day 29, but he certainly went home with 50,000 pounds and the runner-up badge. It's Eugene Sarley. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. Well done. We got more, we got more. We've got from a more recent series, BB16, we've got another runner-up. So two runner-ups with us tonight. We've got Joel Williams. Yay. Yay. Oh. And even more than that, we've got someone on the inside of the Bot Studio. We've got the Bot's audience <laughs> researcher and TV producer, Stephen Luthwaite. So, so we've got, oh. we're going to have plenty to say tonight. We're going to have plenty to say. But I want to go. I want to go straight to Maxwell. Maxwell's taking selfies already. Yeah. <laughs> Maxwell. Maxwell. I've got. I've got an opening question for you, Maxwell. Go on. Did you or did you not crack one off in the box? Yeah. <laughs> you did. Well, no, no, no. Looking back, yeah. I, think I, I think I did. You know what it was, right? I think that must be so early on because I see Sam, who was a. She, she was a diamond. I went in there, but the day I went in to Big Brother, I remember I was in, it was a, it was a massive show back in the day, like ginormous. I got told a month before I was going in, and then all of us, it was, it was the, the first show, I, we all got taken to different parts of France or Belgium by one person who worked for Channel 4. I was in the middle of, a, middle of nowhere with a chaperone in the middle of the French countryside, for, for two weeks and we got ferried back and the night before we got put down there. And, and, the, day, and the day before we went on, we, was in it, we had to wear a mask going everywhere. We got put in this house. And I remember, I could see at the corner of my eyes, I saw the first, I think the first person that went on there, I think, I think it was Leslie. Remember the big bug with the nurse's outfit from Huddersfield? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I think, I think shortly after it was Derek. It was a character, and I'm quite. He was, was quite a character. He really was. I was quite fond yeah. of Derek, and uh, and I taught I live. And then I think a girl called Sam went on there, and I thought, oh, lovely, she's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking all day. I've been drinking all day, and I'll tell you what, because the, the producers go around to all these, all our little pods we was in, just to like, oh, you know, this is what's happening, this is what's happening, this is what's happening. We was all ready to go on, and they. They, I was asking for a beer all day. They didn't, little did they know that I was boozing all day long, right? <laughs> and I remember when I went to get right, like, you're on next. I picked my bag up and all these cans of lager spilled out. <laughs> and I, for fuck's sake, they went. I love the meal at home. I mean, I was, Maxwell, I'll... Maxwell, you, you featured really, really heavily in that show tonight. And I mean, at the end, one of the most legendary tasks of all time the maggots, the coloured maggots. Oh, yes. I mean, how did you feel when you came oh, out yeah. and you knew no one, no one else was taking part? Do you know what? I quite, I come out, I was, I was half fuming, because you, you, <laughs> you think, what's going on? But I quite enjoyed it in there. I, I, I remember it wasn't just the maggots, I had to get I had like a, a bowl of oil and I had to get the, the nuts on the bolts. And I was doing all that. And then, but it, it, it didn't show it there, but it lasted, a couple of days is task. And they, what it was, they had to all come out. They, they, all, they all come out before me and they'd like, so they all had a blinding day out and a beer and all that and a, and a laugh when I was doing that. And then before us to come out, they'll put their hands in some oil and I'll come out of oil. I was like, oh, that was a nightmare, wasn't it? I went, yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I was none the wiser. I was none the wiser the way through. Didn't have a clue what was going on. And when they told me, I was like, what well, all that stuff? <laughs> oh, look, even looking back now, I can't believe it. Well, I, but but I, think, I think I got everyone a party, had a good time. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, it, it was yeah. maddening. But it, it, I'm surprised they put that on at the end. Do you know what? I've, I've met Ryland a couple of times on just 
not for a while, but we it, we was at a party last year, a couple of years ago when we had the rap party and we were set down. And I was I was quite um I weren't on abrasive. I was quite an abrasive then. But maybe now I might have pushed people the wrong way. But when when I was on Big Brother, there was 12 million people watching me. I think I was a, a lot of people liked the, the fact that I was just a normal person. Because mm. you had yeah. Kamal, that, Kamal that walked in in a mini skirt with his bollocks hanging out. With <laughs> <laughs> was, the, the year before me, it was Nadia who was the first transvestite to win it, which is lovely. And there was a murder, but I think they never had no one really that was just just a normal kid. I was 24, remember? I just turned real geezer. You're, you're, yeah, you're a regular geezer, Jack the Lad. Yeah, funny so guy, funny I'm guy. Talking. And of course, of course. So not only did you feature in the box task, not only were you in the maggots uh, task, you actually um, had a good diary room scene with uh, Saskia. Tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm talking about a maggots task. That's, my wife has a maggot sauce every time she takes your pants down at the moment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Sasko. It, was, it, it was weird with her because I don't know if people can cast in mind about how big a fans they were or remember it. But I was, I, back in the day, I don't blow my own trumpet, I was top of the tree to win that series for, for about six weeks. They'd, they'd done these things in the sun, they'd done the top of the tree, the bottom of the tree, why they're the mm -hmm. best of everything. I remember and that. I was, yeah. If I weren't top, I was there or thereabouts for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I went on Big Brother just as a single geezer, quite young. I'd been a couple of seasons in Greece. And I'd, I, 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 I went on there because I thought I'd win 100 grand and I'd be a celebrity and be a millionaire. And you just <laughs> think it when you're young. And um, I, went, I, I went on that and I, I, I went after a bird. I weren't because... But I'd, I'd, at the same time, I didn't think I'd come out and I'd get loads of girls. Because, I mean, look at the fucking state. I mean, I've, I've, improved, <laughs> mate. I've improved with age now. <laughs> you think? I inside that box. It was terrible. I looked like Pete Dockett. I didn't know. <laughs> so, we weren't about that. So, obviously, after a few, I think that's about four or five weeks in, you get bored of. I mean, I'm looking, let, let's have it right. I'm looking at Craig. I'm looking at. Oh, and he's a good looking boy. Not, not looking where who's <laughs> Vanessa, fucking Mad Mary was in there. Like, <laughs> Kamal, I'm looking at his bollocks under a mini skirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, you're going to be propelled to the best looking bird with a massive pair of, you know. Uh, <laughs> you're a young boy. She was young beautiful. Boy. She was beautiful. Yeah, stunning. She was hot. She was very hot. Well, you weren't bad. Well, She's the best of a bad bunch. <laughs> you, you, were yeah, bad bad. you were an item for a while, weren't you? You were an item for a while, were you not? We were, you know, we bought a house together. Did you? Wow. Oh, so it was serious. Dan and Kings. You, you know what? Um, when you're in Big Brother and, and you meet someone like that, and I, I, I think, I don't know, I think you're insecure. I was an insecure. I, feel, I think you go through your life being insecure about things and you don't realise, you've you got to remember there's 12 million people watching that Big Brother series. And you mm -hmm. don't realise how big it is. And um, you, I came out, the day I came out, I, I came out the day after the 7 7 bombs, right? So we're, we were on Big Brother and, and, and the 7 7 July bombs happened. And we, obviously, we didn't know about that. There's a, there's a big discussion between Channel 4 executives whether they should show the series, whether they eventually would go ahead. And for, to, to my, to, it didn't work in my way, but they, they decided to go ahead with the eviction on the Friday. The bombs happened on the Thursday. They, they, they still decided to go on a, on a Friday. It, how big and stupid Big Brother was back then, I still made the front page of every tabloid Unbelievable. paper. Unbelievable. It was so big. After, <laughs> the day yeah. after the bomb. So there was obviously the yeah. bombs. And yeah. got, my, mum, my mum put to the, I got the papers in there. The side of the paper was Maxwell Max kicked out of Big Brother's mad. That's a madness. That's a madness. How yeah. big is that? Uh, yeah. We're, we're yeah. going to have some questions yeah, right. from the audience, Maxwell. I just want to go to Eugene first, and then Joel and Stephen, and then we'll throw it all out for questions. So, Eugene, um, yeah. you came into the house, I think, on day 29. Yeah. Is that right? Three, that's that's three probably days. about right. It was about a month. You're better informed than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, okay, so I, I looked it up on, on, on Wikipedia or whatever. Three days, I think, before the final, you won fifty thousand pounds. 
tell us, tell us how you won that. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, I was um, the, just before, just before that event. I think it was just over a week before the end of the series. There was what I called the drunk task. I think it was called the spy task, but that's not really <laughs> how it turned out. Um, and I got on in the house extremely well with Derek and also Kimal. Um, and uh, we had this spy task. This was one where I had to. Um, do Morse code and all this, uh, did it, did it, did it, did it, and um, and Derek ended up. Uh, I think we we had to expose him as the spy, la di da di da di da, and he got put into the spy room. But the way it's presented to us was that he'd been kicked out the house, and suddenly I realised um, Derek was about the only person I already got on with very well in the house. <laughs> now he's gone. Um, so I was a bit down in the dumps. Next day, or two days later, I can't remember which, um, we're out in the diary room, we're not that diary room, we're out in the uh, living room, and uh, there's a call, and it's around battery charge time. And at the time, whenever there was a call to the diary room, will a housemate come to the diary room? You'd always hear because he'd go, I'll go, darlings, and rush yeah. in there. <laughs> and for the first time, because I used to hate going in the diary room, because I was always going to worry they were going to ask me some kind of like imposing question and make me feel awkward. So I, I think I managed to go on a couple of occasions um, for several days without going into the diary room. And I was very pleased with this achievement. Um, <laughs> so I'm minding my own business. This call comes, and I think, ah, sod it. So I say, I'll go. And in fact, when I watched it back, it's like about one second before McCosey goes, no, it's okay, darling, I'll go. And I said, no, it's all right, I'll go in. <laughs> and you go in and there's this prop of cash. And I think, oh, for God's sake, it's one of these <laughs> things. This is going to be hard work. And I went, it looks like I've made a schoolboy error. And I heard myself come out over the tannoy in the building. And I thought, oh. bugger, this is going out to the housemates. They can see me now. <laughs> and, and I think they had an ad break coming up or something. So they said, oh, yeah, you can take the money. It's yours. Um, you've got 30 seconds to think about it. So I thought about it. <laughs> and I... And I just thought, sod it. I've gone in. I've had to give up my job. Um, if the opportunity presents itself, I'll take it. Well, why, so, not? why not? Exactly. So, so I said, yeah, I haven't. what I didn't know at the time was, in fact, um, or at least what I hadn't processed was, if I hadn't taken it, the prize money would double. Um, so, um, oh. oops. Bit of yeah. error. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I walked out and of course I knew everyone had seen it and I thought there'd be more consequences, but actually everybody, including Anthony and Mikosi and Craig, they were all fine about it, or at least they appeared to be. Um, yeah. yeah. So that, that worked out reasonably well in the end. It UG, I'll tell you why I'm, and I'll tell you why Anthony was fine about it. He walked yeah. out with his brother with fifty grand on him, right? He yeah. went, he went, he walks in the next day, 250 bags out of OK magazine. But don't wow. tell me. <laughs> 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 Good work on him. Amazing. Amazing. That's when you can't get a fucking amazing haircut. Let's just have a word with Joel Williams. Two days later. Sorry. That's all right. Joel Williams, can we just have a word with you? Because you, you've you been a runner-up in one of the more recent series on Channel 5. Um, and you, I think you were only 19 then when you went in. Yeah. So... Tell me, were you a Big Brother fan? Were you aware of these guys' classic episodes from Channel 4 days? So I, I remember, um, and thanks for having me on, I remember no, pleasure, the, pleasure. the Nicky Graham series um, with Glyn. And yeah. um, Glyn... Who was our guest the other day. Yeah, yeah we're, Glyn and I, we speak quite a lot. We're really good friends. Oh, um, do you? Um, I think if you, you may have seen that the year after I exited Big Brother, we both stood for the Welsh Parliament elections and he stood for Plaid Cymru and I stood for the Conservatives and um, okay. we both didn't win, we both lost. Um, okay. But, you know, it was... Um, I can see you laughing, Karen Cummings. <laughs> um, what was that? Go there. No, you carry on, Oh, about Dominic Cummings, that's, that's yeah. Well, we, we, we won't talk about no Dominic problem. Cummings tonight. Um, <laughs> no, I was, I was never a massive fan of the show. And um, for me, it was more about wanting to know more about the show. And I kind of applied wanting to know more. And, you know, it was kind of quite weird. How I ended up getting a place. And sort of everyone that I speak to in, in my series and other series who applied the more conventional way, instead of being recruited and invited, I just applied. Yeah. Um, they all sort of tell me, they all had a gut feeling that when they applied, they kind of knew they would be offered a place. And really? I didn't have that gut feeling. I didn't know why I'd be offered a place. 
but I just had this gut feeling I would. And, you know, I get asked quite a lot by people whose doors I knock as a conservative politician, whether I would do it again. And I probably wouldn't because when you've survived it once to go back in, it's a massive risk. And, Mm. you know, it's, I did it when I was 19, I'm 24 now. And it's, you know, it's almost like it was a great experience. It's a great chapter, but it, it hasn't defined me. And I hope it won't define me if that makes sense. Yeah, I have to, I have to yeah. say, you were only 19 when you went in and you, you came across like you had a head on your shoulders way older than you were. Oh, so That's the way, you, even though you've got a baby face, you seem just oh, way above your years. Very I sensible. Think guys yeah. would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Very sensible guy. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think, you know, when no. I exited the show, the, the Conservative Party sort of said to me, they said, well, you know, you've got really one of two roads you can go down. You can either go down the party road where you, you know, pursue uh, your ambitions yeah. with the party. <laughs> Maxwell's party. Maxwell's <laughs> party. Um, or you can just sort of go down the reality TV route and, and perhaps any other avenue. And I, I think, you know, for me, I went into the show as a conservative and as a councillor, and I kind of wanted to pursue that. So it was it was almost a relief that they allowed me to continue doing yeah. it, if that makes yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. no, it was a really... Well, I'll tell you what, Joel, you certainly polled some votes because you ended up runner-up to Chloe Wilburn. So a lot of people okay. voted for you back then. Yeah, so, no, it was... Me? Yeah. Yeah, if we yeah. can go now to our insider in the box studio before we throw it out for questions, um, yeah. I'm delighted, delighted <laughs> to have um, audience researcher and uh, TV producer Stephen Luthwaite with us. Yeah. So, hey, hey, I just say hello to everyone. I don't know because I know like everybody here. I don't know who I want to say hello to you all, but I feel yeah. like I can't give you all. Say hello, say hello to everyone. So, hello to everyone. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Stephen. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Stephen. So nice Stephen, to see you. Stephen, let me ask you, let me ask you one question and then we're going to throw it out to the audience. So I think you're a self-confessed super fan, Big Brother, and you then, from being a from being a super fan, you've gone on and actually worked on the show for I think six years or something. Yeah. I mean, how did that feel going from a super fan to working on the show? Well, so I grew up watching Big Brother, um, and I was a Big Brother Six was my absolute favourite. Um, it was just for me, it was totally epic. And I can this was back back in the day, going from what Maxwell said before about before social media. I remember being in school, and we used to get like text updates from Big Brother about things that were happening in the house. Yeah. And this is the time as well. I mean, I was like fourteen, fifteen. People would go on holiday. And you'd be in Spain, like Tenerife, and you'd be like, it'd be like, what are you doing tonight? Or oh, we're going to go to a bar and watch Big Brother. Mm-hmm. You know, it was so <laughs> massive back then. And uh, I just loved it. It was, it was like, no matter what, I used to miss things to watch launch nights and stuff. Um, and then I applied to be on the show. Did you? I did. Oh. Uh, yeah. Twice. Yeah. One time I didn't get what? on, and then one time I did get on. Um, and it was the first ever Channel 5 series. I always wanted oh. to work in TV, though. Always wanted to work in TV, and I was a bit unsure about it, really. I had a choice between going on Big Brother or working part-time in a, in a restaurant, uh, living at home with my mum and dad, uh, and then hoping some TV career would kind of manifest. Uh, but it probably wouldn't. Um, and for some reason, I just Doesn't. turned it down, booked a flight to IB for... Um, and then, yeah, spent the rest of the week regretting it. But a few months later, I got a text message from a producer who had kind of cast me on the show saying, um, because she knew I wanted to work in TV. I'd done a degree in it and everything. And she offered me a job, and then I got a job. And what was really bizarre for me was, so I went down to London. I moved down to London to work on the Big Brother auditions. It was the second Channel 5 series, so 2012. And I walked into the office. Now, I'm like this new kid on the block, just come out of uni. Shit, am I allowed to swear, Paul? We're post-watcher, aren't we? Everyone else has. <laughs> <laughs> Tim right? Bennett, come on. And yeah. all we had the on, of course, yeah. They all knew me, but they all knew my deepest, darkest secrets. You know, I've done like the full audition process. I remember having a massive Barney with this like 
woman from Spearmint Rhino and she was like screaming <laughs> at me in the auditions and I was like just like winding her up and they, 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 I'd had like psychoanalysis from two psychologists and then for some reason they thought I was all right to give a job to which I thought was <laughs> baffling. Um, the, the psychologist gave me his analysis of what I was going to be like in the series and I thought I pulled the wool over your eyes uh, but anyway <laughs> working on the show was fantastic for me at first because I was just like I'm living my dream I was living my dream and not yeah. only that it was the last year we did mass auditions around the country so the process Maxwell and Eugene went through would have been very different to what Joe went through back Back in the day, they were going around the country, you know, to different vent like arenas. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Jules, it was a bit. We still did that, but it was a bit more specific and targeted yeah. and planned. So I got to do the last one where we got to go around the entire country um, yeah, and just stopping all these fancy hotels, like staying up dead late, getting pissed in the bar, yeah. and just, like living my best <laughs> life. Um, and then getting to work on bots was fantastic as well because I do. I've always wanted to like be a bit of a performer and everything. I'm a bit, I mean, you all know I'm a bit of an attention seeker. Um, so getting to do, um, we noticed. Yeah. <laughs> to do the audience job was fantastic because I got to like entertain you all, perform, yeah, and, and just also see how, kind of see, see it through your eyes as well. Because I think when you work on a program, even if you are a massive fan, you start to kind of, I wouldn't say stop oh, being a fan, but you see it more in a professional level. So yeah. then getting to be with all you guys, you get to you kind of go back to your roots, really, and you become a bit more grounded with it, you know, and you realise yeah. what it's all about. Am I, am I, right, in thinking, am I right in thinking, uh, Stephen, you, you've worked on dozens of episodes of uh, Pointless as well? Yeah, 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 Lord, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't see the point of that, so should we go out to the uh, 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 questions? Uh, 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 Sorry about that. Apologise. Apologise for that gag. Go on. Anyone have got any questions? Yeah, I've got a question from Maxwell. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, um, I think I read many, many years ago that um, originally you, you wasn't on, but you got into Guinea Pig, Guinea Pig Week, but you that. were so good on that that you then made it onto the show. Is that true? Marlon Williams, man. Who are these people on it? Yeah. <laughs> I spoke to one of our pals, right? So, but I, I, I did it. Okay, so let me shine quickly. I, I won't bore it, man. It's not a bore. I can tell. You carry on, man. Go on. Right. So right. I was 16, I was 16, I come out of school at 16. I've done a four year engineering apprenticeship at Tantan Old Sugar Factory and I was covered in sugar and shit and I hated it. It was good money, but I, I, was, I was learning a good thing. I hated it. But I went, I went on a holiday to Falaraki in Greece, right? And I, was, and I loved it. And I, I was chatting to birds all night and I just, I didn't come home. I had one week holiday and I stayed there for two years. No word of a lie. Oh, wow. <laughs> I come back. I come back to to England, thinking I'm going to go back out to Falaraki and live my life in Greece, right? And I'm, I'm behind the tills in Topshop because I've got a little job for five pound twenty for an hour. Every, and Jay Goody walked up to my till. This is no word of a lie. Jay Goody walked up to my till, uh, one of our pals, and I went, oh, "Are you alright?" And I was like a little bit crumbled because I oh, said, "Love me, brother." She, I said, oh, "I want to go with brother." She, she said to me, "You should go on it. You should do it." I said, no, no, no. fuck it. So, I, went, so I, I, applied, I applied for the year that um, Nadia, um, uh, Victor, and all that. I, applied, I went through. That was the year before, I think, wasn't it? Mm. That's it. And I, I yeah. queued up with 50,000 people at, the, uh, um, at uh, Docklands. I queued up. I got down right close to it. And, and I, I, I got down. They called me up. I said, you are, oh, there's like close with no cigar. Will you be, will you be our go-to person if we need to bring someone in halfway through, right? So I said, yes. Yeah, of course I will. I'm 24. I want to go and be brother. So I wanted to do. I queued up. I, I, anyway, it was 2004 that was. And I remember because I went, I went to Portugal for the European Championships of football. I was, I, I was out there with about 50 of my Arsenal pals. I was having a big old piss up. And uh, I got a phone call off me that one afternoon. <laughs> and it was, it was a, n a number I didn't really, didn't really remember. I'm 23 years old, I'm a boy, I'm 40 now, and well, 39. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> they're like, right, Max is right. So, I don't know if you obviously you do like a massive fan, so you must remember when Victor and Emma had a massive yes, yes, a someone, fight night. someone, fight night. someone yeah. pulled a knife out. I think Victor pulled a knife out. That's right, mm. right. So 
obviously I was unaware of this because I'm in Portugal watching New England and going out and getting up with crackers. So Big Brother would phone me up and said, if we throw Victor out, I didn't know the geezer was. If you throw Victor out, <laughs> will you come will you come come on halfway through? So I said, Yeah, a million percent. So what right, we we'll ended up they ended up throwing the girl out, I think Emma, who the girl Emma was. Really? And they, they put in some right old vegan bird. Worst yeah. as ever. I don't know. <laughs> 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 I love it. And I thought that was my chance gone. That's no word of a lie. But answering Marlon's question, so we got put into a, a guinea pig week where basically the house is there, they've, put the, they've set all the cameras up, and there's about half a dozen people who have tried to get in there who haven't made it, but are on the sidelines. And we had five days in there without probably, and it, it was a madness. So after the series went, I didn't get put in. I sort of dejected myself to the fact I'd never got on Big Brother and I thought, bloody hell. I remember I was sitting in my dad's and the, the auditions come again in Docklands the year later and um, my dad kicked me out of bed. He went, right, go on, because I won't do fuck all. I was going to go, go Fadaraki again, working the top shop for five pounds, 23 hours. <laughs> so he was like, get up and go to these auditions. So the only thing, I got a phone call from Big Brother about a month before, they said, are you going to apply for Big Brother again? And I said, well, I was thinking about it. I said, listen, we, we want you to apply, but we've got new producers. So we can't promise you anything. We can't get you any further. But we can all, all we can offer you is a queue jump. So instead of queuing up for five hours, you can come straight to the front of the queue. And and, and yeah. then, you start, then you've got to start impressing people, right? <laughs> so I turned that about four o'clock. I walked past, there's a queue around the block. Now, whatever. When I was on it, there's, I think 70,000 people applied. There's 12 million people watching it. I remember, I remember getting to this place. There's queues around the block. There's, 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 um, there's security galore. And I, I think I probably had a beer. I'd walk straight. What I did. Or two. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, walk, I remember, I, I, like it was yesterday, I walked straight to the front of this queue where people were queuing, past people. And then and I was getting further and further to the front. People started shouting, going, Oi, he's. He's pushing in and all that. And I go, oh, <laughs> now, I got to the front of the queue. Obviously, the security weren't told. So the security started grabbing me. There's a bit of a there's a bit of a free fall at the front. And luckily one of the one of the one of the um, producers noticed me and they were like, Oh, for fuck's sake. They were like, yeah, no, he's all right. He's he's allowed to come to the front of the queue and that's it. Yeah. And then that's I don't trash. know if I wonder when time well. I don't, I don't know if any any one of you that have been for an audition, but oh I yes, have. I have. When, John when, Cross, when, oh when endless, I, endless. When I went, <laughs> when I went there, there was like I think there was about fifteen people to work for Endemol, and they took ten people at a time, so there was one hundred and fifty people at a time, and that you had to sell yourself for ten seconds. And I remember being at the being at the back of these ten, so there's ten of us, and I was number ten. And I remember this geezer, and he was like, the fact that there's ten of us, like, okay, ten seconds. Why should you be on Big Brother? And the first geezer went, "Well, I'm the funniest. Be I'm the funniest person I know. My pals think I'm the funniest guy alive." So I was go. So I said, "Tell me a joke." He's like, "What? Like, Tell me a joke. You're funny. Tell me a joke." Like, well, not like that. Went, Tell me a fucking joke. Like, <laughs> Next person, nothing about him. Then this bird, she was lovely, and she was like, "Oh, I don't mind getting me boobs out for anyone." So I said, "Go on and get your tits out then." Excuse me. <laughs> go on then, if you don't. Like, well, not in front of you, not. I mean, what do you mean there's 12 million people watching? If you don't mind getting them out, get them out now. Anyway, <laughs> it all come round to me. And it, and they were right, Max, why should you be on Big Brother? And I went, <clears throat> I fucking hate it. I hate watching Big Brother. So the only way to get away from it is to be on a telly, be, be on a show with no television. Right? <laughs> that, that was it. So the, so the geezer went to me. I remember because everyone hated me. And that, 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 that 10 of them, they, everyone hated me. And they're understandable. And a lot of people do now. Yeah. And, and, and he said, okay, he said, if I stamp your hand, thanks for coming. If I don't, and if I stamp your hand, then you're through to the next round. If I don't, then try again next year. And he, he stamped a little bit of pretty girl. And she was lovely. She, he I, think, I think Denise has got a question. Can we go to Denise? Go on, Denise. Oh, yeah, sorry, my question's for Stephen. Hi, Stephen. <coughs> <laughs> You know how you used to work the crowd as this, us, the audience? What, did you find it hard or... Because I think as time went on, we became a family. How was it for you coming on every night? 
seeing us warming us up before the show started. I used to love um, seeing familiar faces, but I think the problem was, because I'm not a stand-up comedian, uh, I'm not like, I, I can't write endless gags. You, it's kind of, it kind of felt sometimes like you were coming to the same show every night from my <laughs> point of view. Yeah. And then I'm just trying to think, oh, should, oh, I should try and think of some different things to say or in a different order. Uh, <laughs> but the at the chance? same time, the there was chance? nothing worse than when, I mean, you will all have been to a show where the, the audience was just flat. Oh dead. my God. And there's just nothing more cringe. Um, yeah. I'd have it in my ear. If if you were bad in the show and weren't making enough noise, I'd get it in the ear. And then if you weren't, if you were too loud, I'd get it in the <laughs> ear. So <laughs> it, was, it was like, oh. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. Know. It was good having enough people like yourselves who who I could just be like, oh yeah, they want you to be quiet now, and you you <laughs> wouldn't be like, oh really? Yeah, you'd just be like, oh, okay, you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you were savvy enough to <laughs> what was going on and stuff. So. Yeah. Can I just ask? Uh, can I ask Eugene a very quick question? Yeah. Eugene, you, you now I don't know if anyone knows that that you appeared in Charlie Brooker's horror miniseries Dead Set. Yeah. Does anyone remember that? It was based yeah. in the Big Brother house and it had yeah, I remember. Oh. Yeah. How, yeah. How did it feel appearing, appearing in that, Eugene? Um, uh, that was quite an interesting day out. That was. We went over to Farnborough to a disused, um, no, it wasn't disused, an active. MOD site where they got a big hangar and built a Big Brother set in it. To be honest, yeah. actually, I thought, mm, actually, this is quite a good way to do it indoors. Um, <laughs> and um, we then we then spent the, the afternoon. So so we had to do this little social thing, like a like a green room beforehand, meeting and and Mikosi was there, a couple other people, um, and um, we were just having to in a very fake way, have a chat with them all whilst they were filming us all. And then later, um, when, Dave when Davina's become a zombie, she has to run around and they, and they, they said, oh, would you like to be a zombie? I said, oh, that could be quite fun. So I'm being made up with a great big rip down my front um, the next day. So I turn the next day for this. And uh, whilst I'm being made up, this zombie comes up to me and hits Davina McCall. I'm like, how are you? <laughs> like, it took me a minute to register. Anyway, the best bit was, I'm lying down in this, uh, in this uh, corridor of this derelict building. Um, well, derelict wasn't supposed to be, but you know what I mean. It, it, it wasn't being used for business. And they said, okay, just lie on the floor. We want you to play dead. So, you know, if, you, if when Davina comes and starts eating you, if you can try not to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm lying there and uh, she comes and eats me. I tried a lot to laugh <laughs> and that seemed to work. Um, and, and the best bit is I know someone who said, oh, they played dead once in Casualty and they said, oh, it was one of the most like tasking bits of drama they've ever done. And I was thinking, no, I just lied there. <laughs> I've got to tell you something, Eugene. I once played a dead body in Law and Order UK when Bradley Walsh was in it. And I was, <laughs> was it challenging? By a letter bomb. <laughs> So I've played a dead body as well, you Excellent. Good work. Good work. <laughs> wow. I think Corinne's got a question. Corinne Clark. Yeah, um, Maxwell, can I ask you a question? Are you awake? Wake up. <laughs> um, I'm awake. Can I ask you? <laughs> uh, yeah, you've got to listen. I'm watching, I'm watching this. Yeah, I'm, watching Craig, I'm watching Craig on... Uh, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you know what that was? That's when I got evicted. He was crying. That was... <laughs> I was watching a few <laughs> YouTube um, videos of you being in the house yeah. and I had to come across one where there was quite a lot of fireworks. I think this week they're not really showing, and last week they're not showing the fireworks that went off in a lot of, a lot of the um, programmes. And you've got science there and you've got you there and you're chasing him around a bottle of wine. Right. Can you recall it? Yeah, listen, uh, he, 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 when you say fireworks, you mean all the, all the fights we have, yeah? Yeah. You yeah. Had, yeah. Um, do, do you know what? Ricardo that you were fighting over, and all I came across was you, <laughs> him apologising <laughs> and shaking hands with you, Ricardo. I don't, I don't know, obviously, you, you, you lot probably know more than I do, but um, when I went on Big Brother, I, I, I always was a troublemaker, but they, they choose people to, um, to clash. Um, Shrouds. Mm. When, yeah. when, when, um, an, an early audition I had, they, they, they put a lot of you in the same room, but a different makeshift diary room to sell yourself for a minute. And I remember this one time I had to sell myself for a minute in a dark diary room 
um, to to an, to a producer the other side of a of a mirror in a in a black room in the middle of Docklands. Yeah. And and I was trying to um, get my words together, and I heard some annoying Manchester some Lee's voice. What are you doing, man? And I was, I was, I was in all the I had to get out, and it was science. And we had, and from that day, I, I, I had to leave. I, I thought I'd ruined it because I pulled him out. and went, "Why don't you fucking shut up?" They must have loved it. But they phoned me. Big Brother phoned me a week ago. Um, they phoned me a week ago. They said, "Listen, we're going to be showing uh, one one of your old episodes." Uh, Obviously, I asked for permission to show it. I don't think it would matter if I said no anyway. But <laughs> I, I, I think with everything what's going on at the moment, um, with whatever, whatever the political climate, the, um, the the coronavirus, everyone's cracking up. They, they, they needed a bit of fun, you know? Yeah. And, and, and that's and, what Big and Brother is. Our, our series was, there was a lot of Raz. There was a lot of Raz. There's a lot of Barneys. Um, but I think that was probably one of the se- one, one of the episodes that epitomised our series where every, everyone was fun. We was we, we had nothing to worry about. There was yeah. I'm thinking when... still produces how much this program really missed. But maybe fingers crossed it could come back. That's if it comes back the original way. Mm. Well, that's well, that, that's it. I, re- I remember I remember Derek sitting there. There's a lot of things that went under the radar now where if you'd said things what they say now you wouldn't, wouldn't get, get away, away with it. The problems, yeah. 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 It is very different now and I, I wanted to ask a question I hope you don't mind me jumping on. Yeah, please do. Please do, Michelle. In there. Um, so going back to what you said in, in your original when you first started speaking in one of your conversations um, you were saying that obviously there was no social media there was no Facebook there was no Twitter there was nothing like that. Do you no. find and also Eugene as well, Joel probably not so much because obviously everything was up and happening when you were on, but do Eugene and Maxwell, do you find that maybe Big Brother back then was your way of finding validation? Do you want to go Eugene? Do you want to have a little word? Go on, Eugene. <laughs> 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 I can pass it back to you. There's one. Um, I, I, I think, you know, in my like social circle and all the rest of, of friends, which uh, even to this day mm-hmm. is not actually as big as one would think it is. It's probably about 10 or so close friends I have. Um, I think they always knew I was a little bit different. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think that's a very good question. Have you been asked me before? Um, yeah, I think on reflection, it probably is because I think it's a time when you, especially if you've had friends that sometimes are a little bit uh, challenging, maybe a little bit duplicitous, and sometimes people who pick on chale- on, on, on little ticks that you might have. So either they don't like something about your personality or they like winding you up and things like that. And you're in, an inter- and you're in a situation where probably, you know, I'm, I'm not saying like Judge Rinda, but <laughs> where, where you're being objectively viewed by other people. And um, on reflection, you then hear from those people what their views on you are. And I think if you stick to kind of, you know, ha- how you are, um, then it's probably a reasonably good gauge of probably how you should behave or be or your personality and what people like and dislike. Um, uh, very good you. question. We've, we've got a lot of questions coming in now. Can we go Karen yeah. Cummings, yeah. Sheila Palmer, Williams and John Cross in that order, please. Karen Cummings. Um, yes, Maxwell, um, your, um, ye- your year was my favourite year of all time because oh, of yeah. uh, various yeah. reasons. Me. <laughs> because you were there. <laughs> right, so for various reasons. <clears throat> One of them was the um, interaction between Anthony and Craig. And mm. you, just looking at you, right? Mm. But Anthony and Craig, that, that, yeah. what went on there with the unrequited love? Were you aware yeah. of it? And when did you notice something oh. was up? Do you know what? That's a question, brilliant question. Do you know what? I was talking to Anthony today. All afternoon, I've been talking to Anthony, Anthony all afternoon about things. And um, it's a shame, you know, we went on there. I remember, I, I think, I think um, Le- Leslie walked on there, the first one, or Derek. I think Derek and then Leslie and then Sam. And then I walked on there the, the, the night of Big Brother. And then I remember Anthony walking on like a Wally. He walked around a bit with dudes. And then there's then Craig come on, right? Now... They've fallen out over the years, but we, 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 it was we was thick as thieves. Me, Anthony, and Craig at the time we was thick as thieves, mm-hmm. and Craig was is 
he came on Big Brother. He, his dad was a was a football fan. He was like me, basically. He was like me. He was a big guy. Craig hadn't he hadn't come out as gay. He hadn't come out as gay. When he, when, when, when he went on. <laughs> well, this is it. Right, so this, this is it. So, so I remember one day you sitting down here. He, he used to, because I, I like the football, he, he was rubbing my feet, and I don't give a fuck who rubs my feet. I love, <laughs> I, I love my feet getting rubbed. He's rubbing my feet. Oh. There you go. Max, he went, he went, Max, he went, your friend's watching this. Are they, are they going to like, wind you up about me rubbing your feet? I said, Craig, I said, until your cock's in my arsehole, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, but one, with us tonight, one night, I remember one night he sat us down, he sat us down and, and, and he pulled the duvet up. It was me, I think, Saskia, maybe an Anthony. You no, know, just me, and, I think it was either me or me or Saskia. He went, he, he, his family didn't know. He went, Max, he went, oh, this, he pulled the duvet in. I went, I oh, fucking know oh, you can. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, hey, Craig, mate, you're the only person that don't know you're gay. Everyone else is <laughs> gay. Celo, Celo's got a question. Uh, the but the quick thing um, is... Should... But Joel? Joel? Go, Sheila. Hey, Sheila. Um, hi, Joel. Um, it's fascinating to hear Stephen talk about the audition process because... As we know, it's changed drastically over the years. Mm. You know, initially back in the day, you had to submit um, a video. Then they went through all the queuing up and all that scenario and so on. And I, I remember distinctly when you came into the house, a 19 year old who was like a conservative um, candidate. Is that the right expression? But and I must say, I was quite surprised and thinking, is he really going to fit in with some of the people in the house? So tell me, did you go through the whole process? Like and, and the initial way, weren't fast tracked or anything like that. You 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 know that laborious process of filling out lots and lots of forms and going through all the uh, rigmarole that you go through. Did you go through that process until you eventually found yourself in the house? Yeah, so um, it's a, a really, really interesting question. So I um, applied in the December um, or before before I, I went into the house in the May and um, I got asked to send a video, a 90 second video. So I sent that in. I then had an email back inviting me to the University of Westminster to do a, um, a sort of rounds and go through sort of different interviews and things like that and interesting fact i was actually in a um a group task with raf um who oh, yeah. came second i think the year after yeah um mm -hmm. and raf and i are really good mates so we we speak quite a bit and um he he didn't get through that year and i did so i went through the the normal process i met the execs a few times um you know, the behavior assessments, things like that. So I went through a completely, if there's a word normal, that normal process. Um, and I remember when I sort of finished in the house, I sat down with the execs and they said, gosh, we didn't actually expect you to do as well as you've done because we actually thought that we'd put in the Tory and you'd be first out and, you know, the public just wouldn't like you. And, you know, in a way, I think I, sort of felt it was more of a validation that mm. I almost proved the execs wrong because of course they knew what they wanted. They wanted to make good TV and I respect that. That's what they've got to do because that's what gets people paying for ads. If the views are going up, I get that. Yeah. Um, but no, it was, it was a completely normal process. And in terms of what Maxwell says, I, I actually had to leave the house um, twice when I was in there. And um, I think it was reported um, that I obviously had to go, I had to have an operation on my back um, oh. I was, was in the house because I had a cancer scare. And um, the oh. doctor thought that I had had a melanoma and it um, was really scary. It happened on the Saturday night and um, obviously Big Brother paid me to, to go private. So on the Monday I was seen, I had the operation. And anyway, on the Friday, it was the massive eviction night where I think about eight of us were up for eviction. And I think it was the time that Mark went. Um, but um, I remember going in and seeing the doctor for the results and it turned out it wasn't cancer, thank goodness. And he told me, he said, you know, I, I've done some research. I know you're in Big Brother. 
do you want to Google yourself? I've, I've done some oh. research. Oh. Wow. Oh. Do you know what? I, I said no. And that was probably the best thing I could have done. Yeah, definitely. I had said yes, yeah, so I could have had maybe five or ten minutes of reading a little bit about myself. It's a bit bad he said that. But <laughs> it would have distorted my uh-huh. take yeah. on how De- that was yeah. ruined. Yeah. Well, definitely. Can we, can we go John Cross and then Daniel? You're, you're that, this is just, that's all leading to the question. Do you think, as a Conservative, uh, Big Brother helped you be more acceptable? Do you know, by the public, do you know, for conservatism, bringing it, do you know, do you think I've done you a favour? Yeah. I'm, Making I, look, conservatives more likeable? Look, I I hope that the people who <laughs> saw me whilst I was in Big Brother could actually see that, you know, don't get me wrong, everyone has a stereotype and yes. a lot of people have a stereotype perhaps about how conservatives are and what conservatives do and so on and so forth. And in many ways, I wanted to try and demonstrate that I'm not the stereotype that Pat's <coughs> Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, and look, at the end of the day, you might not vote conservative. That doesn't really bother me. Um, but I do. I'll, I'll listen to your view and I respect your view and I hope that you'll allow me the same courtesy of respecting my view and that's mm-hmm. how in a way as a society we will do far better so actually we want to listen to each other we may well, not you should have until Joe um, so it's all in. <laughs> well, oh come on you know? can we go um, Daniel Halawi please I'm joking fucking <laughs> uh, uh, so <laughs> so basically the question to Joel it kind of echoes it's a little bit controversial oh. um, it kind of echoes what um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so me being a <laughs> conservative as well and I've I've dealt with a lot of backlash and there's a lot of virtual signaling out there and stuff like that how did it feel and I know in Big Brother they wouldn't really talk too much politics but like did you have conversations with people in the house and did anyone kind of change their mind because like you said there is that view but we're not bad people you know we care we care about the country I remember Chloe and I had a a really interesting discussion and I think they actually aired it and it was talking about a tax policy, you know, all right, it's quite boring. It was, she was asking me, well, what do conservatives and what can conservatives do for working class people like me? And I I said, well, the best thing that we can do for working class people is give them a tax break. So actually put more money in their pocket. So they actually decide how they want to spend their money. And I remember it was a really interesting discussion because... (laughs) People's lives are really busy and you know at the end of the day I respect the fact that people don't necessarily have time to read every everyone and every different party's manifestos so it's quite nice to just speak to Mm. Chloe about about those sort of things yeah yeah Um, can I can I just um, jump in for a second Um, next week's uh, question time comes from Northampton Um, and if anyone's going to be in the Northampton area on question time uh, Please join okay. us. Uh, I've been Fiona Bruce. Be there. And um, <laughs> if, if you've got any other questions, uh, not about yeah. politics, that'll be great. <laughs> have a question, Denise, Stephen. Denise has a question, and then we'll wrap yeah, up. I know, yeah. Steve, I know, Steve, and you had your <laughs> question. What was your question? Oh, it wasn't as much a question. It was more just, I just wanted to make an observation about Big Brother 6 and some yeah. of the older Big Brothers. I don't know what you guys all think, but I really liked particularly Big Brother 6, Derek used to always get up really early and do the dishes and his poetry. Yeah. And what you used to get with the old ones was you'd, you'd start to know the contestants in a different way to what yeah. you would in the ones that I worked on and the ones that Joe was on. Because it wasn't like a montage. So you'd be like, oh, McCursey's always last up. She's always having a row because she sleeps through the alarm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that happened, but uh, do you know what I mean? So it was, I think, I think we, we, we found out a lot more about the housemates back in the day. Than what we did. The habits, yeah. We, we've had this conversation and it, it did change a lot mm. from, without being disrespectful, from Channel 4 to Channel 5. Mm. The older days, you had the real people, you had the people who weren't just looking for fame and they were just, just wanted to be part, just wanted to do something. Yeah. So maybe just be that experiment. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm well, I'm well, 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 We've got to wrap up in a minute. Sorry, guys. Got to, I, thought, I just want to thank our guests tonight. Um, um, rich and famous. Maxwell Ward. What's that? I wanted to be rich. Fuck that. I want to be rich and famous. <laughs> Let's work again. <laughs> now, I'm learning about the taxi driver. I, w- I want to thank Maxwell Ward from BB6 for joining us tonight. 
<laughs> Eugene <laughs> Sully from BB6 for joining us. Joel Williams from BB16, thank you so much for joining us. And of course, our TV producer, Stephen Luke. Yeah, Luke yeah, um, tomorrow night, tomorrow night is our final show. Mm. And um, ah. we have got we have got a mega lineup tomorrow night. I'm not gonna say who's coming on, but we have got some absolute big brother legends. So you're not gonna miss tomorrow yeah. night's show. <laughs> So okay. thank you so much, and um, thank it's, you. it's been great. Thanks, Paul. Thank, thank you. you. See you later, guys.